I'm very drawn to water. The ocean, rivers, lakes, waterfalls. And consequently, most of my work is in some way based around it. When I'm standing at the seashore, I feel a sense of peace, calm, that I then try to bring out in my photographs. I'm not the sort of photographer who likes to recreate in a photograph exactly what can be seen with the naked eye. I like to, in a way, use the camera as a paintbrush to give my own personal perspective, my own take on a particular location. I also like simplicity, an uncluttered composition full of light and space. One of the techniques I use to help me do this is long exposure. Long shutter speeds that are made necessary either by working in low light or by the use of a filter. A byproduct of these long exposures is of course a blurring of anything that's moving within your composition. And the effect on water and sky can be very beautiful. The technique helps give me the simple clean photographs that I'm always looking to create. Using a big stopper is not a particularly difficult technique, but it does involve a workflow of sorts, doing a few necessary things in the right order. So Lee actually have two long exposure filters, the big stopper and the little stopper. Now the big stopper will give you 10 stops of difference in your shutter speed, so it will increase your shutter speed by 10 stops. The little stopper is not a name referring to its size, as you can see, they're exactly the same size. The little stopper will actually give you an increase in your shutter speed by six stops. Now, you might think there's not an awful lot of difference between six stops and 10 stops, four stops, but to give you an idea, using the little card that Lee give you uh, with each filter, I can see that a, an exposure of an eighth of a second, so a normal shutter speed of an eighth of a second, using the big stopper will give me two minutes exposure. Referring to the exposure guide of the little stopper, I can see that the same normal shutter speed of an eighth of a second will, only, will give me eight seconds. So you can see there's quite a big difference, but eight seconds to two minutes. So you have the big stopper and the little stopper. So both filters come in the 100 millimeter format, but also for the 7.5 system. So if one thinks about the process of a long exposure, obviously the camera is going to be using a shutter speed that's much longer than your average photograph. And there's various things that can happen through that long exposure that can affect the quality of your photograph afterwards. So what you want to try and do is make sure as much as you can that your camera is as solid and as sturdy as it can possibly be. Now what you want to do is make sure you have a tripod. Again, as sturdy as you can get. The second thing you want to try and think about is a cable release. Now you can get these from anywhere. Uh, I would advise you to get one you can plug into the camera. Uh, and they tend to be much more reliable and again it means you can control the shutter speed uh, from the camera without having to touch the camera which is obviously a very good thing. It also means that you can use the bulb setting on your camera which means that you then control, you're taking over the shutter speed from the camera, you're operating it and you decide how long the shutter speed is going to be, not the camera. So those two very important things that you'll need if you want to, to do this sort of stuff. So what I want, want to produce here is a, a photograph of this old seawall behind me. Now, uh, this seawall's been here for many hundreds of years and it's got a very solid structure and that's ideal for this sort of photograph. I'm going to use the big stopper uh, to smooth the water, uh, which will add an air of simplicity to the whole image. So that's how we're going to do this. We're going to use the big stopper, we're going to smooth this water down and hopefully create a very lovely, very uh, ethereal photograph. What you need to do next, before you even put any filters on, is take the photograph as it is without a filter. Uh, well, I've already set up the photograph that I want, the, the, the composition I'm after. I'm going to take a, an exposure now without any filters and that's going to give me my starting point to then add the filters and decide on the right shutter speed afterwards. So let's do that now. I'm using the meter inside the camera. I'm going to check the histogram and that's saying that it's about a 60th of a second. So that works well for me, a 60th of a second. So we're now ready for, for the big stopper itself. First of all, of course, the filter ring. You'll need to get the one that corresponds to the diameter of your lens. On that goes. Next comes the filter holder. Now you insert that onto the ring using the little plastic teeth first and a little brass fitting that clips over the top. We're on. Now, with regards to focusing, as soon as we put on the big stopper, which is in essence a very, very dark piece of glass, the camera essentially becomes blind. It won't be able to see to focus. So all the focusing has to be done beforehand. Now, regardless of whether you focus manually or automatically, you need to make sure that once you've focused, you need to make sure the camera is set to manual focus, because otherwise what will happen is 
the filter will go on, uh, you'll press the button to take the picture, the camera will be searching, you won't be able to see anything, it'll be blind, so you'll be searching for something to focus on. So you need to make sure that if you're focusing automatically, that you've clicked your lens onto manual focus afterwards. That will stop it, that will lock the focus in place, and it will no longer be a problem. It, the, the camera will understand that and it will be fine. So this is a manual lens, it's a manual focus lens. So I'm, I've already focused, that's not a problem that way. If you're using manual focus yourself, that's not an issue. So the filter hole is on, the filter rings on, uh, we've done our exposure. The last thing to th talk about is this here, your viewfinder. Uh, light, with this sort of, uh, with this sort of uh, technique, light can get in through here and actually ruin your exposure. So you need to make sure that this is covered up. Now with this particular camera, it's just a flick of a switch. I can actually cover up the viewfinder. If you don't have that on your camera, just hold your hand there or you can get little things that go over there, that's fine. Anything just to stop light getting in. Pretty important, so don't forget that. Right, so everything's ready now. We need to get the filter and we're away. So here it is, the big stopper. Like I said, a very dark piece of glass with this little spongy bit around the, around the outside there. That goes towards the camera. And if you have, you need to make sure that it's on the, uh, on the slide is closest to the end of the lens. So it actually seals all the light. No light can actually creep in around there. So that's in. We now need to make sure we get our exposure. So we reach inside the tin and we get a little exposure guide thoughtfully provided by Lee. And we looked at a 60th of a second as a shutter speed beforehand. That will, according to this little guide, give me 15 seconds with the big stopper. So that's what we're gonna do now. Set the camera to 15 seconds. I've got this set up quite high. So let's go to 15 seconds. There we are, ready to go. Let's take the picture, see what happens. I'm here on top of the cliffs in the very beautiful Land's End in Cornwall and I'm about to take a photograph of this great rock formation right behind me here. Now while I've been standing here setting up, the mist is coming off the sea as it often does and to, uh, to counteract that a little bit, to give me a bit more of an even exposure, I'm going to use a grad filter in conjunction with the big stopper. So here's the grad and what you want to do is put the grad in before you put the big stopper on obviously because as soon as the big stopper goes on you're not going to see a thing. So you need to put the grad uh, in first and you're going to use the the guides the furthest away from the camera. And you'll put that in, and I'm gonna use the eye just to set that up. Now I'm ready for the big stopper. So, here it is, in it goes. Push that into place, make sure it covers the whole of the front of the lens and we're ready to go. So I want to make a photograph of this tin mine perched uh, on the side of this cliff here. And equally, we're perched on the side of another, another cliff trying to get this shot. And what's happening is two things. First of all, the light's dropping very quickly, which is giving me a normal shutter speed of about half a second. What else has happened is that the wind's picked up. It's actually quite a strong wind blowing here now. Now, if I use the half a second shutter speed with a big stopper, that's gonna give me around about eight minutes exposure, which would be fine if it wasn't for the wind. Now, what will happen in the wind is just that it'll start to move the camera. And because the wind's coming from that way, I can't really put myself in between the wind and the camera. So I'm gonna use another little trick. I'm going to use the little stopper because if I use the little stopper exposure guide, if I look at my half a second, that will give me 30 seconds exposure time, which is much more manageable in the circumstances. So let's do that. Close down the eyepiece. In it goes. Off we go.
What I'd like to do now is have a direct comparison between the effects of the little stopper and the big stopper. The normal shutter speed before the filter went on was 30th of a second. With a little stopper that makes two seconds exposure. You can see the effect that this is having on the photograph. There's still a certain amount of texture within the water. I can still see some of the outline of the waves, but the water is very smooth and very soft. Now over to the big stopper. Our shutter speed of 30th of a second becomes 30 seconds with this filter. We can see here the dramatic difference. The ethereal water is very flat, there's hardly any texture left, the whole thing has a completely different feel and sensation. Now with the two images side by side, you can clearly see the difference. You'll find when using the big and little stopper that your images will have a slight blue colour cast. Now this is easy to correct. You can either increase the colour temperature of your camera before you take the photograph or if you shoot raw you can easily correct in post-processing by increasing the colour temperature slider. Personally I quite like the blue, it gives a sort of dawn feel and when I shoot in colour I tend to leave it but for shooting in black and white the blue cast is not an issue. As you can see, using long exposures can provide some very dramatic results. Just remember to use a very sturdy tripod, focus and exposure settings should be on manual, and cover the viewfinder when the shutter's open.